mulai kurang dengan mama. Video berita itu.
Yogesh? Good morning, good morning. Sri Dhala, Laila? 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 Okay. Laila? Laila? It better work. Welcome more than any other. Welcome in a Gopal Krishna Narmati in Tiltedro. Oh, okay. Anchoring Martha. Welcome Gopal Krishna Martha. No? What are things Nang Mada Kildro? No one, Abidi. Okay. Okay.
ஹலோ யோகேஷ் மார்னிங் ஸ்ரீகண்ட்மூர்த்தி இஸ் நாட் ஜாயிண்ட் ஹலோ குட் மார்னிங் சார் கங்காதரன் சார் வெல்கம் யூ டு திஸ் எஃப்டிபி ப்ரோக்ராம் Uh, till the program inaugural function commences so we will request you to speak about uh, virtual lab uh, give me another one minute i'll be just uh, getting things put it together okay okay are you sir professor okay are you this is another department mm-hmm. uh, ஹலோ சார் டைரக்டர் சார் யா குட் மார்னிங் டாக்டர் ஜிதேந்திர குட் மார்னிங் சார் பிரின்சிபல் சார் குட் மார்னிங் குட் மார்னிங் டு எவ்ரி ஒன் ஜிதேந்திர ஹலோ யோகேஷ் சார் ஜாயிண்ட் தி மீட்டிங் ஓகே டாக்டர் வில் ஸ்டார்ட் தி இனாகரேஷன் டாக்டர் கபிலன் எஸ் சார் யூ கேன் ஹி ஹஸ் காட் ஓன்லி ஃபிஃப்டீன் மினிட்ஸ் எஸ் சார் ஓகே சார் டைரக்டர் சார் குட் மார்னிங் சார் குட் மார்னிங் 
dear participant, the chief guest of today's inaugural function, Dr. Deshpande sir has joined now. Now I request Dr. S. G. Kopala Krishna, Director NES, to give welcome address. Correct, sir. Hello, Dr. Deshpande. Dr. Deshpande. I'm not aware. Audible? Hello? Uh, Hello? Good Am morning, I audible, sir? Good morning. Good, morning, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Sir, uh, shall we start, sir? Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll start, sir. Start, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good morning to all the participants, respected uh, registrar uh, Dr. A.S. Deshpande, Professor uh, Gangadharan uh, from uh, NITK Suratkal, Dr. Srikantamurthy, Principal of uh, NCET, and other uh, faculty members and uh, the other participants from different institutions. Uh, first of all, I am very happy that uh, Dr. A.S. Deshpande has joined this uh, FDP on virtual labs for the teachers of mechanical engineering department for the inauguration of the event. In fact, I would like to mention here, he is a very busy person as the head of the university for the entire state. He is a busy man and uh, within a very short notice he has joined the affection that he has got towards he has joined this uh, inaugural program. I would like to Briefly introduce him. He has done his uh, BE from Karnataka University and then the MTech uh, from IIT Kanpur in the Mechanical Engineering Department. And uh, he did his PhD very interestingly from uh, the erstwhile NITK, the National Institute of Technology, Karnataka, with whom we are associating today for this uh, virtual uh, FTP also. Uh, Dr. Deshpande has a rich experience. He has also worked in the industry initially, then moved on to teaching, and then he held the position of the principal in two engineering colleges. One of them is in Karnataka, namely the KLS GIT in Belgaum, which uh, he spearheaded towards uh, the autonomy. I'm very happy that that college uh, has grown in multiple bounds under his able leadership for almost uh, 11 years. And uh, overall, he has got 13 years of uh, principal's uh, experience itself. He has a very good administrative exposure and uh, good uh, leader, in fact, and a true human being. That's what I have observed in him. Whenever we interact, he is always very helpful. Thank you very much, uh, Thank Dr. You, for uh, honoring our words. And on this occasion, I welcome you to this uh, inaugural function. Thank you, sir. Thank you very uh, much, sir. Yeah. Thank you very much for your uh, words. Just uh, brief about uh, this FDP, sir. Last week, uh, we conducted one FDP for about uh, five days uh, for the uh, engineering college mechanical engineering department teachers sir in 2015 as you know we when we got autonomy we started the virtual lab in our curriculum we have included two experiments under each laboratory and uh, we have entered into an mo in fact i invited uh, professor gangadharan uh, two three times to our institute to give uh, more information on use of the use of for the virtual lab in the mechanical engineering field. In fact, for almost all the laboratory courses, they have developed this FT, the virtual lab experiments. Therefore, we thought this should be spread across other colleges as well. And hence, we have conducted a FDP wherein the faculty members who are participants have given a very good feedback and therefore, we requested uh, Professor Gangadharan again, can we have one more workshop this week? About uh, 85 participants have registered for this uh, workshop. It will be running from today to Friday. With this introduction, I request you to address the participants, Professor Deshpande. Namaskara, sir. Very good morning. 
Thank you, Professor Gopal Krishna, for those nice words. Uh, I've been closely associated with uh, Nagarjuna College of Engineering and Technology for uh, past few years. Uh, I was a part of their governing body also for a couple of years. Uh, I always see this institute as uh, an institute which has experimented with uh, the newer concepts. Uh, to tell you frankly, I have learned some wonderful uh, ideas which have been implemented in this institute. Uh, under the able leadership of uh, Professor uh, Gopal Krishna. Uh, yes, uh, the, the topic of this FDP on virtual laboratory, uh, I see uh, it makes uh, uh, an absolute sense uh, to, to uh, offer something more uh, learning to the teachers on this uh, very important topic. Uh, of course, NITK Suratkal, Professor Gangadharan, of course, they have been doing a fantastic job. Uh, I did interact with Professor Gang Gangadharan while I was in Gokte and also in VTU also we had a uh, few uh, introductory sessions done and VTU also is going in a big way with uh, this virtual laboratory project uh, in association with uh, NITK Suratkal. I'm very happy to see that, you know, the Nagarjuna College of Engineering has come forward and, uh, you know, has organized this FDP to reach to uh, the teachers. As you all know, uh, during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, the remote education has uh, forced teachers to use every tool in their toolbox. Of course, the, the various digital platforms, the digital interventions, uh, you know, this has become... I have Professor Voice has got not muted. Hello, am I audible? Hello? Hello? Yeah. Yes, sir. See, uh, I was uh, mentioning about, uh, you know, where, where up to what point you could get me. I, I was talking to you about my, our connect with NITK Suratkal uh, in this digital uh, uh, virtual laboratory uh, for the learning. Uh, I, I was associated with this particular program while I was in Gokte and in video too, we are. Uh, going in a big way uh, in association with NITK Suratkal on this virtual laboratory concept. As you all know, because of this uh, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, the remote education uh, has become very important and the teachers are using different digital platforms for having interventions with the students. And uh, of course, these digital platforms, which uh, if they're plain, then, you know, students are not really very keen on uh, you know, interacting on this platform. If these uh, platforms could be augmented with some visual and, you know, if you could give them some kind of a hands-on feel, you know, that makes uh, a good uh, impact. Uh, as a note, today we are interacting with uh, the Generation Y students. These are the students who are very fast in learning, uh, but also they are demanding and uh, they will accept whatever we are going to offer to them, if and only if they are convinced and, uh, you know, if and only if they could experience. He's always said that for today's generation, it's not just the education, but the education has to be coupled with experience and exposure. And then and then only it could make sense for the whatever teaching learning systems that are being offered to the students. I think a virtual laboratory is a wonderful concept which uh, really takes you forward in the, in the in the in on this particular uh, uh, philosophy in the sense you are offering them the education coupled with experience coupled with the real kind of an experience in a virtual environment it is basically an interactive environment where you find the simulated experiments and you know i could see this as a wonderful playground for experimentation uh, i think uh, professor gangadharan and his team uh, could get you some wonderful feel about this virtual laboratory concept now, uh, as far as the virtual laboratory for the mechanical engineering domain is concerned, it's more challenging. You know, we know 
the virtual laboratory or the online learning or the experimental experiential learning for the programming or it based subjects is something which is been seen for past many many years but for the mechanical engineering domains you know for the subjects which are not primarily with the it based the the workshop the forging the manufacturing procedures etc etc you know offering these uh, you know the learning experiences or the lab experiences on the virtual uh, lab platform is a big challenge but what i could see is that this nitk team along with the few uh, other uh, institutes of national importance you know they have developed few wonderful modules where you get the real feel of the shop floor on the virtual environment in the in the virtual environment you know typically the forging typically the the extrusion or for that matter many of these design related exercises you know you can get a wonderful understanding i think this is something which is going to stay for the years to come and always it was said at one point of time that because of this all one online platforms and online learnings that being uh, offered the students the role of teacher is not going to be that significant in the days to come but i absolutely don't agree with this the role of teacher is going to be more important and more challenging you know as i was mentioning to you that we are dealing with this generation y students the students who are very very demanding the students who have got very less patience if they don't understand in the first go Hello, Deshpande. Your audio is muted again. Host can unmute him. Hello. Yogesh, you can unmute it. Okay, okay. Uh huh, uh huh. Okay, okay. Hello. Hello, Desh Pandey. Sir, you can give a call over the mobile, sir. I'll I'll do that now. Yeah. Hmm.
ಯೋಗೇಶ್ ಅವ್ರಿಗೊಂದು ಇದನ್ನ ಹಾಕಿ ಮೆಸೇಜ್ ನ ನಾನು ಫೋನ್ ಮಾಡಿದೆ ಎತ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಎಮ್ ಐ ಆಡಿಬಲ್ ಅಂತ ಹಾಕಿದಾರೆ ಅವರು ಒಂದು ಮೆಸೇಜ್ ಹಾಕಿ ಇದ್ರಲ್ಲೇ ಹಾಕಿ ವೆಬ್ಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲೇ ಬೇಕಾರೆ ಸರ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಸರ್ ಸಾರ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ರಿಜಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ಡ್ ಚಾಂಬರ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಅ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಯೋಗೇಶ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಟೈಪ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೀ ನೌ ಪ್ರೊವೈಡಿಂಗ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಬಿ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ನೆಟ್ವರ್ಕ್ ಹಲೋ ಕೇಳ್ತಾ ಇದೀಯಾ ಯೋಗೇಶ್ ಯೋಗೇಶ್ platforms etc etc you see here uh-huh. the role of teacher is going to be more like a facilitator you know he has to you know understand what is to be offered in the typical online mode how the student should be prepared and you know he should facilitate the discussions he should see what could be offered online what could be offered offline and you know he has to go for a nice blended kind of a learning in the days to come and the teacher has to be more prepared you know because uh, when we go for these kind of online platforms uh, you know the experience is altogether different as you must have seen that the companies like tcs infosys and all top leaders including ibm you know they have concluded that these online platforms especially for their jobs and you know the work from home kind of a concept which has been implemented in all these it companies it has yielded them better results the productivity the efficiency has gone up and that's the reason why most of the companies are planning to go for you know the total work from the home concept you know similarly in these uh, you know the online learning platforms if it is offered in the right way with the right kind of experience for the students it would have a wonderful effect and students would accept it of course we have uh, so many issues like the connectivity the devices the, the knowledge about the use stage of the platforms so these are certain things that need to be addressed but certainly this is going to be the 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 concept of today and tomorrow which is going to be inevitable once again on my personal behalf and on behalf of the university i place on record my special thanks and appreciation to professor gopal krishna and his team from nagarjuna and professor gangadhar and his team from nitk suratkal for organizing this workshop special thanks for uh, inviting me for the inauguration of this workshop and uh, you know uh, uh, sharing my few thoughts with you all i'm sorry i cannot be here for longer time we have the joint board of studies online schedule uh, at uh, 10:45 so i need to be there so once again thank you very much sir uh, it was wonderful interacting with you all this morning thank you sir thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you sir thank you yeah, thank you there for another 2 minutes uh, the vote of thanks uh, by the principal yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah sir. yes sir yes. That, uh, can i request uh, professor gangadharan to say two words 
प्रोफेसर गंगाधरन या Oh, he is not there. I think. Okay, uh, Shrikant Murthy, you can go over to Shrikant Murthy for the vote yes, of thanks. Okay, sir. I am audible, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Audible, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, respected uh, uh, Chief Guest of the today's function, Dr. A. S. Deshpande, Registrar of uh, Vishwanath Technological University, uh, Resource Person, Professor Gangadharan, uh, Dr. S. T. Gopal Krishna, Director, my fellow colleagues, and my dear participants. Uh, it is my great privilege to propose vote of thanks. We are overwhelmed by the presence of uh, Registrar in this inaugural function. His presence has va added value to this workshop. In spite of his busy schedule, he accepted our invitation and uh, inaugurated this workshop and also addressed all of us. Uh, on behalf of Nagarjuna College of uh, Engineering and Technology, I extend my heartfelt thanks to you, sir. Sir, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I thank Professor Gangadharan from Suratkal, uh, NITK Suratkal, for his continuous support and guidance in conducting this workshop. Uh, thank you very much, sir. And I take this opportunity to extend my heartfelt thanks to Director Dr. S. G. Gopalakrishna, and he has taken a lot of initiative in adding these virtual labs in our curriculum and consistently and constantly guiding us uh, towards his success. Um, his guidance are very much valuable for us. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I, I thank all the chodis and all the participants uh, for having participated. In fact, I would like to add here uh, one uh, sentence. Dr. Deshpande has done wonderful initiatives in his uh, college, GIT, especially uh, with the industry interaction, industry institute interaction, and the application of the technology there. Fantastic uh, achievement uh, they have done. Very wonderful yes. initiatives he has taken. True academician. Uh, we were on different uh, committees and things like that, but uh, a true academician and a very yeah. human being. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you much, Professor sir. Srikant Murthy. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you very much, sir. Thank, thank, you. You. Okay, sir. thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Yogesh? Dr. Kapilan? Can start. Dr. Gangadharan is there? Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm there, sir. Sir, I requested you to say a few words. Can when... I give you a brief introduction? Huh? Can I give you a brief introduction? He has got one more meeting, it seems, sir. Joint Board of Studies meeting online. So he left this meeting. I wanted to you to address, sir. Hello? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Professor Gangadharan, no. Gangadharan, no. Professor Gangadharan has to start now, no? Yes, sir, yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Over, to, over to Gangadharan. Yogi sir. Ah. Uh, sir, that is Dhru. Just. Okay. Ah, there. Okay. Okay, sir. Left. Okay. Go ahead now. What is the activity, Kapilan? Sir, uh, Gangar sir will address the gathering. Sir, after that, uh, first session commences. Okay. He's joining service network, uh, maybe problem. He's joining. Uh -huh. His voice also is not audible. But uh, register, sir. So now Kapilan can continue, sir, because let him give the introduction and all. I think uh, by the time Gangadharan sir will uh, join now. Better. You start, Kapilan. Kapilan, you can oh, add interaction everything. What? Oh. I think Deshpande sir again came, I think. Is it? Uh, 
Yeah, that is chair ketol ibc is uh, fine fine appellan just talk to him sir gopal krishna sir ah oh, he is not there yeah okay no, sir no, he has left he has left but uh, earlier it was chair chair ketol ibc was ka kapilan ha chair ketol is kapilan hmm in mangalore it's raining sir that's why saying a network problem no you go ahead you okay. go ahead it is let him join after that maybe okay. after one hour or so okay 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 otherwise the first presenter who is the first presenter let him start yeah, balaji sir i'll tell him to come and sir yogi sir sir uh, shall i say share the content sir ओके सर हां डॉक्टर गंगाधर ने जॉइंट आई थिंक नाउ इट्स ट्राइंग टू स्पीक एम आई नॉट ऑडिबल या यस नाउ यू आर ऑडिबल ओके सो देन Uh, before the presenter takes uh, takes over, I just give a brief introduction of all about uh, virtual lab. I hope you, I'm audible now. I have uh, unmuted my. I mean, I have uh, removed my video so that the bandwidth condition should not uh, trouble us. Yes, sir. Uh, sir yeah. and, and I'll also share the screen um, so that I will just start. How did we start this activity? Uh, so that the participants can get. Uh, a uh, just glimpse of how it was all started i'm just uh, thank you share my screen uh you need to just tell me if i if you are able to get the screen there because in the presenter view the screen is uh have you are able to see my screen yeah now uh, so the virtual lab the concept was started somewhere in 2009 uh, then uh, we all of us there are 12 institutions who are involved you can see the participating institute uh, the emblems which is uh, scrolling on the bottom side seven iits and few nitk coip pune and dayalbag and amrita enterprise hyderabad 12 institutions together started creating experiential learning content so the question was is it possible to create a laboratory at the learners place learner space and learner spirit so in order to have a lab which can be accessible throughout without any lock and key and having it made available on an uh, the laptop or mobile phone with the minimum amount of bandwidth was a question which was asked so the there is a common look and feel for all these virtual laboratories and what we created is i'll just show you one uh, this is the website vlab.co.in then from there you will be able to go to uh, any of the institute or any of the branch being mechanical i'm just looking at what all labs which nidk has created uh, fluid mechanics lab Uh, transportation lab is from civil environmental engineering lab one and two fluid me uh, mechanics lab new labs we have created again marine structures mining and geology lab industrial drives electric drives sustainable or i mean substation automation and mechanics of machines lab and machine dynamics and vibration lab here we thought we'll just show you quickly one lab which is uh, uh, suitable for Uh, we do syllabus as well as uh, the syllabus of many of the polytechnics where kinematics are taught mechanics of machines so a set of experiments are provided these experiments are not a regular lab experiments which is prescribed as a laboratory course but this is used for demonstrating or making the student to experience the basic concept 
I'll just take a quick example. I hope you are able to see a slider crank mechanism which is on the screen. Yogesh, can I get a feedback? Yeah, okay. And because sometimes the screen also may not come properly, so that's why I'm looking for a feedback. So when uh, uh, just one moment, I have a <laughs> registered pause. I need to. I'm in the office. I'm sorry. So, sorry for that, uh, this because I am in the office and some registered post has come, so I can't make him wait. Uh, so, here, slider crank mechanism is shown. Uh, suppose we want to demonstrate what happens if the length radius changes, the crank radius. I'm sure all of you are mechanical engineers, so when I change the crank radius, what happens? And we have kept an L by R ratio within the range. So you will also see when I am moving the uh, L, when I am moving the R, you can see the L changes because L we have kept it in such a way that L by R ratio is 2.5 to 6. Uh, that's how it is considered. So you can also stop this and start showing the students at what angle, what will be the distance, etc. Okay. This is called position analysis. When it comes to velocity analysis, that is the second screen I am showing. Here again, I, I should be able to change the radius, L, etc. And I can get the velocity. You can see the velocity, how it is changing. And assume that I can even stop this at a point and start looking at, at different angles. What happens to the diagram? And it's very difficult to draw this way on an normal blackboard or even in a PPT. So this is a math, small math engine works behind so that you should be able to change any parameter as you wish. So from here we can go to the next mode, uh, which is where well, I'll be able to show both position, velocity, as well as uh, acceleration. So this is a concept and using this you should be able to find out appropriate experiments for every concept which you teach. So what we suggest is every faculty member who is taking an engineering either diploma or degree course should find out what is the corresponding lab or what are the corresponding experiments because all the labs or all the labs may not contain all the concepts which is required for your syllabus. Whereas in VTU, we have a map where when it comes to the diploma courses, we are yet to map and uh, we are seeking your support. If you need a specific area where you feel the concept need to be explained using a virtual lab, uh, please get in touch with us. We should be able to help you and create such laboratory for you. So with this brief introduction, this is an experiential learning concept or experiential learning content wherein the entire theory procedure, laboratory simulation and QCIS are put in a simple learning management system so that a learner need to look at only one place and get the things moving. So it can be for a student to just get used to the laboratory or to understand a concept or a teacher to explain the concept better or a job seeker trying to see whether his basics can be improved quickly by looking at few of these experiments. And as a later part, we also like each one of you to develop few experiments so that you can claim your, your own experiments on a virtual lab. With this brief introduction, um, I thank the organizers, Nagarjuna Engineering College have been very active in virtual lab and they are one of our strong nodal center. Uh, mechanical engineering head of the department who was also a research scholar at NADK. Uh, I have been pushing the virtual lab for mechanical engineering quite well and this is the second which I am attending in the inaugural session and my team will connect you uh, with each of the lab wherever we need to get in and we also would like Nagarjuna Engineering College faculty members to take the lab 
so that they get the confidence and so so they will explore all the lab and experiments quite well with that an etiquette uh, virtual lab team thank uh, the entire participants as well as the organizers including administration and the people behind this program thank you thank you everyone and i'm just stop sharing the screen and back to the organizers or the hosts thank you dr kv gangadharan sir for your support and encouragement to do this type of activity and uh, we will discuss with the diploma polytechnic college faculty members and see the syllabus and if they need any support from nitk we will share it with you thank you thank you here participant will start the first session on uh, tenth material this session will be handled by balaji and he's having 15 year of experience in this uh, subject now i request mr balaji to start the session balaji thank you sir uh, yes sir sir uh, screen is visible right sir am i yes yeah, sir okay thank you sir good morning all i welcome you all to the session on uh, virtual lab in strength of materials i am balaji wires associate professor in department of mechanical engineering nagarjuna college of engineering and technology firstly before uh, going to the the topic that is strength of materials i would like to give the brief introduction about what is a virtual lab and what are the salient features of this virtual lab virtual labs it is an initiative of uh, ministry of human resource development under national mission on education through ict information and communication technology and uh, there are many participating institutes like it includes seven iits triple it hyderabad and other universities like amrita university dayal bag nit k karnataka and uh, coe pune these are the participating institutes which are uh, working in developing this particular virtual labs next introduction to the virtual labs what is virtual everyone knows virtual means which is not real okay that is not physically existing as such but made by software to appear to do so and what is virtual laboratory it is an interactive environment for creating and conducting simulated experiments and it is also uh, more familiarly it is called a playground for uh, experimentation why it is called playground for experimentation it is very simple there is a freedom to make mistakes okay that is why it is called a playground for experimentation and there is a famous famous saying we hear and forget we see and remember we do and understand and uh, this uh, famous quote what So from the famous quote we understand that we should always encourage the students to do the things rather than just hearing or seeing okay when we, when the uh, when the student involves in uh, doing the things then only he will understand the concept in a better way because doing the things and saying the things saying saying and doing will come and come into an uh, active learning whereas just seeing and hearing will uh, come into an uh, passive learning therefore uh, we should encourage the students to understand the things by active learning and see uh, to emphasize that i have i have taken one uh, research uh, article where uh, edgar dale is the source of this particular thing that is the core of learning if we can see here the reading reading hearing words seeing watching a movie looking at an exhibit watching a demonstration seeing it done on location all these things all these things uh, of the pyramid will come under a passive learning passive learning because here only two things are involved one is seeing and hearing okay when when we talk about this one participating in a discussion giving a talk doing in a dramatic presentation and simulating the real experience doing the real thing these two things uh, all these things comes under the active learning and why uh, why this cone of learning is important see here after two weeks we tend to remember only 10% of what we read 20% of what we hear and 30% of what we see and 50% of what we see and hear that means when we are involving in just passive learning our retention ratios will be up to 50% that means after two weeks 
if you have read if you have if you have read some particular content you, there is a probability of just retaining those content is about is of about 50% okay if you are involved in doing the things and saying the things then the retention ratios will range up to 90% therefore we should always encourage the students to actively involve in the discussions or uh, uh, we should encourage them to give a talk on the topic or we should simulate the real experience and do the real things this is what uh, the uh, importance of uh, the virtual labs next there are different types of virtual labs the three different types of virtual labs is the first one is modeling or simulation based lab and next one is a uh, measurement based labs are there and remote triggered labs are there when it comes to the reality okay the remote triggered uh, labs are very much closer to the reality whereas modeling or simulation based labs are highly scalable okay remote triggered is closer to the reality the reason is there is an actual equipment which is present in the participating institutes and you are uh, remotely you are triggering or you are operating that equipment to get the results through the computer interface that is what is remote triggered labs after the uh, this presentation i'll just give you an a glimpse of this remote triggered lab okay but for time being you have to remember that a remote triggered lab is an actual laboratory which is situated in the uh, participating institute you as that is a user will access that remote uh, lab remotely by with the help of an internet and he will get the results of that particular exper experiment through uh you will get the results of that experiment through the computer interface okay this is what is called as a remote triggered uh, lab whereas measurement based labs so, when we talk long. about measure please i request uh, the participants to mute the audio sir is it audible sir what i am speaking hello you okay, sir audible 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 okay sir when we talk about uh, measurement based labs here uh, actually the experiments will be conducted and uh, the results of that uh, actual experiments were will be fed into these particular uh, virtual lab uh, setups such that when you conduct an experiment virtually the results what you are going to obtain it is the real results which were which were obtained by conducting the experiment which uh, really okay like I, whereas uh, modeling or simulation based experiments are uh, labs are there this modeling or simulation based labs uh here the physical uh, uh, phenomena physical phenomena is uh, modeled using a uh, mathematical equations yeah. some uh, budayam please uh, mute the audio modeling or uh, simulation based experiments are there okay in modeling or simulation based experiment uh, uh, experiments this actual physical phenomena will be modeled using a uh, mathematical equations and those are simulated to get the results out of it like these are the three different types of uh, virtual labs one is remote triggered lab which is more closer to the reality the other one is measure measurement based labs and the last one is a uh, modeling or simulation based labs and when we talk about modeling or simulation based labs it is highly scalable like this uh, about the types of virtual labs and what are the objectives of the virtual lab project to provide an a remote access to the labs in various disciplines of science and engineering there are many in uh, colleges where the facilities will not be available in such cases the students can access this uh, uh, facilities uh, uh, that is uh, this virtual labs to have an, a better uh, learning experience and um, to cater the students at the ug level pg level as well as to the research scholars this is the other objective the next objective is to enable the students to learn at their own pace and own time and to arouse their curiosity okay and uh, the last uh, important objective is to provide a complete uh, learning management system that includes the web resources video lectures animated demonstrations and self evaluation like these are uh, the four important objectives of the virtual lab projects like i'll explain in detail why this virtual lab is considered as an, a complete learning management system in the coming uh, slides and now uh, who are the intended users the college students who do not have the access to the good lab facilities okay are the intended users and high school students whose inquisitiveness will be triggered possibly motivating them to take up a take up higher studies and researchers in different institutes who can collaborate or share equipment and resources and different engineering colleges who can benefit from the content 
and related teaching resources. Next, what is the basic idea? There isn't a physical lab located remotely and the internet uh, uh, access is required where the number of users can access that physical lab which is located remotely, which is located remotely through an uh, internet. Okay, next, what are the broad areas of virtual labs? Okay, we, the broad areas, it includes almost all the engineering sciences. And uh, like we have an, a labs, uh, virtual labs related to electronics and communication engineering, computer science and engineering, electrical engineering, mechanical, chemical, biomedical and biotechnology, civil engineering, physical sciences and chemical sciences. It covers almost all the engineering sciences. Next, uh, virtual lab as a complete learning management system. Why it is called complete learning management system? At a single place related to any experiment, you can find the theory. There is a theory portion and the procedure how to uh, conduct the experiment is available. And there is a self-evaluation. There is a pre-evaluation as well as a post-evaluation. Okay, we can see this self-evaluation is the after reading the theory and the procedure, we can evaluate ourselves how much we have understood. And there is a simulator to conduct the experiment. There is an assignment section. There is a quiz section that is after uh, uh, conduction of the experiment uh, to understand our understanding uh, to know what, what we have understood. We can go through this quiz section. And next, we have any videos related to that particular experiment, references, and there is a feedback section. Like at one place, you can find all the necessary things to completely learn about that particular experiment. Therefore, it is called as a complete learning management system. Next, uh, value adding in a nutshell, like it is an on-demand labs that is learn at own, own pace, self-evaluation, pre or post lab this is available, integrated learning, contents at one place, animation or video tutorials are there for better insight, freedom to make mistakes, can experiment with experiments. Next, like participating institutes, we already discussed it. Now, what are the benefits of virtual laboratory? Everyone participates actively. We know when we talk about, uh, when we conduct an actual experiments in the laboratory, there are many students who won't actively involve. And the batch size also, uh, though even though the batch size will be 15, there are many students who stand back and they won't concentrate on the experiments. Okay, or else they can't have a better uh, view at the experiment of the being, uh, being conducted. In such cases, only few people will be actively involving and other people will not be actively involving. But when it comes to the virtual laboratory, each and every, par every participant will actively involve in doing the experiment. Next, multiple scenarios can be presented, can repeat the experiment multiple times. There are, see, when we, for example, if I take an, a tensile testing uh, equipment itself or a UTM, and there we are conducting a tensile test, there is many limitations that we can't uh, do multiple times. Okay, it may be with regard to the workplace itself, or it may be regard to the timings. Okay, or it may be uh, like many other issues will come into picture where we can't repeat multiple times. Like we can repeat once or twice, once again, but it is not like n number of times. There is there are a lot, lot of limitations when it comes to the real labs. But when we talk about a virtual lab, here the user or the uh, student can repeat the experiment n number of times till he gets a complete understanding of the topic. Next, the receive prompt and for personalized feedback. These are some of the benefits of virtual laboratory. As we said, there are many equipments where we won't allow, we, we can't allow the students. Instead of saying we won't allow, we can't allow the students to operate that equipment. The reason is it may be the cost and um, it may be a lack of uh, experience for the student to operate that equipment. Okay, like these are some of the reasons we won't allow them to touch the equipment itself if it is very costly. In such cases, uh, uh, they won't have a better understanding of that particular experiment. In such cases, virtual labs will at 100% will help them to have a better understanding. Next, what are the drawbacks? Whatever, as we know, virtual means which is not real. It won't give any real hands-on experience with the experimental operators. Like equipment, they don't have a feel of the equipment. Like they can't touch, the, they are not touching the equipment uh, literally. Therefore, don't, they will not have a feel of that particular equipment. And the chemicals, when we talk about chemicals, okay, uh, like it may be having an odor, and all these things will be there. That feel also they won't get. And do not teach the technical lab skills, how to hold that wise uh, uh, or how to hold the hacksaw. Like these kind of skills, for example, they won't learn when, we, when they completely concentrate on only on the virtual labs itself. That means you can see that do not provide a full sensory experience. Do not promote creativity, cause students to think things are disposable. This is the another problem what uh, this virtual lab uh, 
uh, what the drawback instead of problem it is considered as a drawback okay but when when the real things are not available this plays an important role like we never expected we are very unfortunate we are struck down in this uh, lockdown because of this uh, global pandemic coronavirus okay uh, and at this particular point of time 100% this makes a lot of sense like uh, the students will have a better experience of uh, this laboratories through this virtual lab okay because they don't have an access to the real laboratories at least they can have an a better uh, they have an access to the virtual labs where they can have an a better understanding of the topics next all the labs can be reached through the following sites like vlabs.ac.in is there or vlab.co.in these are the sites to access all the labs like the complete uh, the broad areas of virtual lab which includes entire engineering sciences can be accessed through this two websites next uh, the list of now i'll come to the actual topic that is uh, the first session which we are discussing about the strength of materials lab okay like um, what is strength of materials it is the behavior of the solid bodies which are subjected to the stresses and strains it is the behavior of the body under the application of forces okay like in the strength of materials lab or mechanics of materials both are one and the same okay and uh, in the strength of materials lab we are going to discuss about these uh, these many labs are available in the virtual laboratory like iso test is there charpe test is there direct shear test and uh, on mild steel wood and mild steel plate renal hardness test mohr circle bending stress deflection in cantilever deflection in beam like these are some of the experiments which are available in strength of materials lab in virtual laboratory okay there are destructive testing as well as non destructive testing okay um now we shall uh, i'll move directly to the website and i'll access the virtual laboratory and i'll um, uh, take a tour over that particular virtual laboratory first uh, firstly i'll open the website like uh, vlab.co.in is the uh, website address with through which uh, i will log in and in this uh, the strength of materials lab is found in civil engineering lab in civil engineering the strength of materials is found i'll click on the civil engineering here you can see the broad areas of virtual labs i'll click on the civil engineering in the civil engineering section you can see there are structural dynamics lab like many other labs are available now uh, the lab which we are going to discuss is about strength of materials lab when i click on the strength of materials lab you can see the introduction to the strength of material is available here okay and the list of experiments is available here as we know strength of materials is is the study of behavior of the solid objects under the application of stresses and strains or it is the behavior of a body under an application of forces like say so you can these these many experiments are available in the strength of materials list of experiments isoid sharpe direct shear and mild steel rod like these are number of experiments which are available in the strength of materials lab and you can see when you click on uh, the strength of materials lab there is an introduction list of experiments target audience course aligned prerequisites feedback everything all all at one place is available like what is the what is the prerequisites to understand these particular laboratories everything is available here now i'll go to the one uh, experiment that is isoid impact test i will click on if i click on the isoid impact test again you can see there is a theory here impact test why we conduct the impact test to measure the toughness of an a material okay to measure the toughness of the material we will uh, conduct an impact test and the theory related to that particular impact test like um, uh, in case of an ductile material how the stress concentration increases i am not going in detail about the uh, theory part because uh, here our emphasis is uh, uh, to facilitate you people uh, uh, to explore uh, the virtual labs which are provided uh, which are available uh, to help the students to go through this particular labs for the better understanding and uh, therefore i am not concentrating too too much about the theory i just want to show you or uh, help you to explore uh, the complete virtual labs which are present in the strength of materials like uh, what is uh, toughness means it is the ability of the material to absorb the energy uh, before the fracture occur, before the failure it is a total amount of energy that is uh, been absorbed before the failure okay like uh, this impact test is conducted to measure the uh, toughness of the material and uh, how this uh, notches which is present will affect uh, in case of an ductile material as well as in a brittle brittle material all this theory will be given here 
Okay, and uh, you see in the theory itself, you can observe how this uh, specimen has to be positioned. Okay, and um, you can also see the dimensions of the test specimen, how the specimens has to be prepared according to the Indian standards. Okay, you can see here the notch uh, depth is 2 mm, and uh, the notch is placed at a distance of 28 mm from one, one end, and the total length of the specimen is 75 mm, and it is in a square section of 10 cross 10. Okay, and all dimensions are in mm. And notch angle is 45 degree included angle like all the information related to this is in a square test piece and this is in a uh, round test piece like all the information is available in the theory part okay and the student has to go through this theory uh, once he goes goes through the theory the next step is he has to go through the procedure what is the procedure involved okay to access this particular lab or how to conduct this particular simulator uh, isoid impact test Okay, for that he has given the procedure. The steps you can observe clearly here, how uh, the step after the step will proceed. But I am not going to concentrate on the steps because directly I'll conduct the experiment so that you will understand what are the steps involved in it. Before going to this uh, uh, procedure, there is a self-evaluation. We have to evaluate uh, ourselves. Uh, what is the what what we have understood from reading the theory of this particular isoid impact test? For example, you see uh, any salient features you remember here. Okay, like, uh, you know, the impact test is conducted uh, to measure the toughness of the uh, material. And next, um, you can observe how the uh, specimen is uh, positioned here. The specimen is positioned in the form of a uh, vertical cantilever that you can observe. And you can see the notch. Notch is facing towards the hammer, okay? Angle of tip of striker, okay? Notch, notch is, V notch is there, and this notch is facing towards the Hammer. This is another point you can observe here. Next, you can see uh, the notch depth is 2 mm that you can observe. The length of the specimen is 75 mm that also you can observe. Next, it is in a square section of 10 cross 10 that you can observe. Like you have to go through this theory and the included angle is 45 degree. All this, once you go through the theory, you have to take up a self evaluation. And you can see the relevant Indian standard for the isoid impact test IS 1598-1977. Uh, method for isoid impact test of metals. 1598-1977 is the method for isoid impact test of metals. Like this is the theory what we have to go through. After going through the theory, there is a self-evaluation, which we click on the self-evaluation, you will get a quiz there where you can evaluate yourself. Like check your understanding after you have gone through the basic theory and the procedure to use the simulator. Now I'll go with the self-evaluation. And if any participants, if you wish, you can answer the question, okay? You see, in the isoid impact test, the angle at which the pendulum is placed from the ground is dash degrees. Anyone, instead of uh, the one-way one -way traffic, I want if participants are uh, interested in answering the question, I'll just click with the same answer what you are giving and we shall check the answers. Any participant is wish to give the answer? How much, sir? 90 degree. 90 degree. Uh, I'll click on 90 degree and we can check the answer. And it is in a right answer, nine, right answer. Next, I'll move on to the next question. You can see here the toughness value of a material A and the material B are 60 Joule and 5 Joule respectively. He has given the toughness values of material A as well as material B. Material A has in a higher toughness, 60 Joule. Material B has in a lower toughness, that is 5 Joule respectively. Which of the following statements is more suitable? Material B is more ductile than material A, and material A is more tougher than the material B. Material B is more brittle than the material A, and material A is harder than the material B. Material B is more brittle than material A. Material B is more brittle than material A. Some participant has given any other answer. Any others? Shall I click on the same answer, what uh, the person has said? Okay, I'll check with the same answer what the participant has given. The toughness value of the material A and material B are 60 Joule and 5 Joule. And uh, he's saying that material B is more brittle than the material A. If I check with the answer, it is in a right answer. Next. How is the test piece supported? Like we have gone through that theory, right? Uh, there we have, you people have observed how the test piece is supported. How it is supported? Anyone, any any answer? Vertical cantilever. Vertical cantilever. Vertical cantilever. I'll click on the vertical cantilever and we shall check the answer. It is a right answer. 
Next, in the same way, like five questions will be there. Which property of the metal is used to check in this test? In this test, toughness. which property we are going to find? Toughness. 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 On the test. toughness. And, uh, and it is on a right answer. Next, the one is, what the initial energy of the hammer is how much? What is the initial energy of the hammer? Any answer? 164 joules. 164 joules is the answer given. I'll check with the answer. And it is in a right answer. All the five questions uh, answered is correct. All five out of five people have got. You scored five out of five. Like this is how you can test. Uh, uh, you can, you can self-evaluate. We can self-evaluate. After self-evaluation, we have in a simulator to conduct the experiment. See, in the simulator part, you can step-by-step -step procedure. Here also it is given. If you read, you will understand. The first step is with the objective of this experiment is to find the impact resistance of the mild steel and cast iron. Okay, you see here there is an arrow mark, uh, uh, this greater symbol, uh, what you can see. Okay, you click on the greater symbol here. If I click on that, see the first step is, first step is kindly mute the audio, sir. Other participants, please kindly mute the audio. Request the participants to kindly mute the audio. Please request the participants to mute the audio. Girish Kumar, please mute the audio. Step one, you see, test for the friction loss is, loss is conducted by adjusting the pointer to the 164 joules. Then pendulum is released by operating the lever without keeping the specimen. The first step is, we know when we conduct an isoid test, the first step always is to make the pointer to the 164 joule, that is the maximum value in the uh, scale. And uh, without keeping the specimen, we have to allow the pendulum to fall freely to measure the loss of energy due to friction. Now see the pointer is moved to the maximum uh, value, that is 164 joules. And this is the lever which I have to release such that the pendulum falls freely. Okay, uh, And the, here this one is not placed. Okay, Click on the lever. If I click on the lever, you can observe how the pendulum has fallen freely. And once it has fallen freely, you, it measures the loss of energy due to friction is 2 joules. Okay, once this step is completed, again, you will find a uh, greater symbol uh, here and you click on this symbol, okay, it will go to the next step. The step two is what? Select the isoid test specimen. You have to conduct the test for cast iron or mild steel that you have to decide. Okay, for example, I'll take the mild steel. For the mild steel, I'll conduct the isoid test. If I click on the mild steel, the specimen, what you are seeing, the dimensions of the, dimensions of the specimen will be measured and it will be displayed here. You see the length is 76.6, the breadth is 9.42, depth is 9.4, and depth of the notch is 4 mm. Okay, with this, uh, this is the data of that particular specimen what we have selected. And this lab, what you are conducting, what we are conducting, it is a measurement-based lab. That means here, whatever the values you are going to get, uh, these values are the result of the actual experiment which is conducted in the laboratory. They will conduct an experiment in the laboratory in a real sense, and whatever the values that they have got, that will be fed into this particular uh, uh, experimental data. Okay, like this. Once this is done, I have to move to the next step. That is, the selection of the specimen is completed. And after that, you observe here what we are doing, how to place the specimen is shown here. Okay, we are placing the specimen, the ISOID test specimen as per the standards IS 3766 1977 is placed in the position. Like this, we have to place the position. How we are placing? In a vertical cantilever form. And the notch has to be placing towards the striker. Okay, like this, we have to place the specimen. After placing the specimen, you see the next step is, again, we have to move the pointer to the maximum level and we have to leave the, uh, we have to release the pendulum by uh, clicking on the lever. Once I click on the lever, you can see here the specimen, how it is placed. This is, uh, this is a zoomed view of this particular place. Okay, if I leave the lever, if I release the pendulum, you see how it has broken. The specimen has broken here. Okay, the specimen has broken and the total loss of energy due to transit of hammer is 54 joules. Therefore, the energy for the failure of the specimen is 52 joules. Because loss of energy due to friction was 2 joules, 
and the energy uh, loss due to the transit of the hammer is 54 joules with the specimen therefore the final energy for the failure of the specimen is 52 joules like this this is the first trial what we have conducted okay this here everything is there initial energy of the hammer 164 joules average loss of energy due to friction is 2 joules total loss of energy due during transit of hammer is 54 joules energy for the failure of the specimen is 52 joules okay like once this is Sir, uh, any problem is there, sir? Uh, some participant is saying that audio is not there. Others, could you hear me? Hello. Could you hear me, sir? Can yes, hear sir, me. Can hear you. It's audible, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Sir, sir? no problem, sir. Clearly, we will observe. Yes, sorry, sir. Okay, sir. After the first trial, you can observe here. Uh, the second trial, uh, yes, second trial, we have to, we are going to conduct for the second, uh, the second uh, trial we are going to do with the same isoid impactors. In this, the specimen dimensions again, it will display the specimen dimensions. I'll move a little bit fast because we have seen the first trial. The second trial will be of similar type. I'll move on with a little bit quickly. So again, in the same way, the specimen is mounted there, and uh, again we are releasing the hammer, uh, this pendulum and it is breaking and you are getting what is the energy for the failure of the specimen that is 41 joules once that is done again the third three trials we can do okay the third trial you see again the specimen dimensions uh, what is the specimen which is placed here the dimensions the dimensions of that specimen is uh, displayed here after that if you click on again the specimen is mounted uh, in the vertical uh, cantilever form and again we are going to release the pendulum as we release the pendulum okay it breaks and energy uh, for the failure of the specimen is displayed here. That is 39 joule. You can see here 39 joule. Okay, like all the three trials we have done. Okay. And uh, the results of all the three trials you can observe here. Loss of energy due to friction is 2 joules. 2 joules here it is 4. The total uh, energy for the failure of the specimen is given as 52, 41, and 39. Average energy for the failure of the specimen is 44 joules. Okay, like this, this is how uh, the isoid impact test will be conducted in virtual uh, environment or uh, virtually. Okay, like uh, see uh, why this plays an important thing is the, uh, we have seen the students, there are many students when examination comes, that is on the first day the lab uh, experiment will be done and uh, they won't go through or they won't see the lab once again or the experiment once again, directly they will come to the examination. During the examination, they don't remember how the specimen has to be placed or uh, how uh, uh, how uh, in what is the procedure that has to be followed to conduct the experiment also but when because of this virtual lab one day before the examination also we can go through the steps uh, or uh, uh, steps involved in carrying out the experiment therefore he will have a better understanding and he can uh, uh, do the lab experiments in much better way when compared to the other cases like virtual lab really helps the students to have a better understanding okay now what i will do uh, the simulator that is how to conduct the simulated uh, experiment we have uh, we have seen now there is an assignment here only the assignment part is there you can see the assignment there you can see all the questions which are available uh, we can ask the students to go through this uh, or, uh, submit the assignment for the same questions also okay next there is a quiz part again there is a quiz one was the pre quiz or the self evaluation the other one is the post uh, quiz that is uh, to check the ability uh, to answer some of the questions relevant to the simulation that you used. We have done a simulation experiment. Related to that, uh, there will be some questions. We have to answer that. Now see, which kind of notch is used in the test piece in an isoid impact test? Any answers, sir? V-notch. 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 Okay, sir. V-notch. We shall check with the answer. And it is in a right answer. Next. The test piece is placed in such a way that the notch is facing up away from striking edge down towards the striking edge the what is the answer sir towards the striking towards edge towards the striking edge and it is a right answer next notches are used to to minimize plastic deformation all the above as a stress concentration region easy breakage any answer sir why all notches are used in case of an as a stress stress concentration region any other answers? I'll check with the uh, answer. Many are telling as a stress concentration region. I will we shall cross check with that. Okay. If I check the answer, the answer is what? All the above. 
and it is in a wrong answer. Okay, all the above is the right answer. Next, IS code for isoid impact test is what is the code for isoid impact test? 1598 Okay, sir. I will click on that. We shall check the answer. It is in the right answer. Next, the last question here is the isoid test specimen, the angle of 45 degrees. 45 degrees. 45 degrees. Click on that. We shall check the answer. It is in the right answer. Like this, we can conduct an experiment and uh, we can self-evaluate ourselves before the experiment and after the experiment also. Assignment is there, quiz is there, videos related to that will be available here for this experiment, there is no videos. And uh, for references, you can see if for in better insight into this particular topics or greater knowledge into this, they can refer these particular uh, uh, reference materials so that they will have a still better uh, understanding uh, of this particular experiment. Like this is about the isoid impact test. Now I'll move on to the, some other experiment. I won't go to the Chappie test. We shall see that at the end. See, like what we'll do is I'll I'll cover three or four experiments now. In the afternoon session, there is a hands-on session, right? During that time, you have to explore all the lab uh, experiments which are available in the strength of materials. After two days, there will be a uh, quiz for you people through Google Forms, we'll conduct it, during which uh, you have to answer all the questions related to these particular experiments. Now I'm, I'm, I will cover another two experiments, that's all. After that, the remaining experiments you have to go through during the afternoon session, that is hands-on session on your own, and you have to explore everything. And once you explore all these things, there will be a quiz related to this uh, according to your schedule, okay? Now I'll move to the next experiment. In the list of experiments section, I'll go to the Brinell hardness test, okay? Brinell hardness test. In this, again, there is a theory. Everyone knows what is hardness is is the ability of the material to resist the indentation, scratches, or uh, oh, scratches, or uh, indentation or scratches. Okay, next, um, you can see the parts of this uh, Brinell, test, uh, Brinell testing equipment also. And uh, all the details related to the experiment will be available in the theory part. And the formula to find out the Brinell hardness number is also available, 2 pi by pi d into d minus root of d square minus d square. Where P is the load in kg, D is the diameter of the ball, small d is the diameter of the indentation in mm, the constant value, and G is acceleration to F, F is the force in Newton. All the details are available. Okay, and the standard is 1500 2005 uh, method for brittle hardness test for metallic materials. Like you can go through all the theory part which is available here. Once after going through the theory part, you can see everything is available here. See, the indenter used is a hardened steel ball, which will have a diameter of 10 mm, 5 mm, or 2.5 mm. That means in Brunel hardness test, we use the indenters, indenter, which is a hardened steel ball, which will have a diameter of 10 mm, 5 mm, 2.5 mm. The reading microscope has 25 fold magnification. The gap between successive graduations of the scale is 0.5 mm, and the micrometer is arranged sideways. All the information related to this experiment will be available. You should have, you should patiently go through all the theory then you have to go for a uh, self-evaluation. I'm not going through the procedure. The reason is when we start the experiment, at that time only we will understand what is the procedure involved. Instead of that, uh, uh, wasting, for that sake, uh, no need of wasting the time in going through the procedure. Directly I'll go to the experiment. Now I'll, uh, I'll, I'll consider that everyone knows the theory and I'll uh, start with the self-evaluation. And uh, in the self-evaluation, you can observe the Brinell hardness test, the diameter of the ball used to test copper specimen is. What is the diameter of the ball you have to test the copper specimen? It is in a uh, non-ferrous material, which will be more uh, softer in compared to the ferrous materials. 5 mm is the answer uh, the participant is giving. I'll check with the 5 mm. And it is in a right answer. So the next question is, select the correct, correct statement from the following. Okay. Select the correct statement from the following. All are correct is the first statement. And a rigid material has no plastic zone. A ductile material has large plastic zone. Brittle materials has no plastic zone. All are correct. Is correct. Yeah. A rigid material has no plastic zone. Ductile material has large plastic zone. And brittle materials has no plastic zone. What is the answer, sir? All are correct. I'll all click are, on. All are correct. All are correct only. I'll click on the all are correct. And it's in a right answer. Next, the ratio of test load. The surface of indentation in this test is indentation number, the ratio of test load 
to the to surface area of indentation in this test is indentation number shear strength of the material none of this brinell hardness number which is the answer sir brinell hardness number brinell hardness number brinell hardness number i'll check with the answer brinell hardness number right answer sir it is the right answer brinell hardness number yes sir it is correct sir during hardness test the indenter is usually a ball indenter all of the above pyramid indenter cone indenter which one is the answer sir all of the above all of the above sir all of the above many are all telling all of the above i will go with the same answer it is on the right answer brinell hardness question the value of distance between successive indentation is always lesser than the distance of center of indentation from edge of the specimen which one is it is true or false sir the value of distance between successive indentation is always lesser than the distance of center of indentation from edge of true. specimen true is the answer some participant is giving sir true answer check with the true it is a wrong answer and it is answer is false that means the value of distance between successive indentation need not to be less than the distance of center of indentation from the edge of the specimen that is what is the meaning there okay like uh, we have uh, gone through and uh, four questions out of five was correct like assignment quiz video reference everything is there now i'll go to the simulator for conducting a brinell hardness test to determine the indentation hardness of the mild steel cast iron brass aluminum etc using a uh, brinell hardness testing machine and then this is the brinell hardness testing machine if i click on this symbol it uh, it uh, takes to the next window where we can select the material on which material we shall conduct the test sir i'll conduct with the cast iron first okay if i take the cast iron you can see what should be the loads that has to be applied will be mentioned here itself cast iron and mild steel these are the ferrous materials on the ferrous materials the load applied will be 3000 kg okay and the diameter of the indenter is 10 mm what we are using here okay all the information is available next i'll select i'll click on that now the specimen is placed on the uh, anvil and if i click on this particular uh, arrow mark what it is showing see you will see another uh, uh, figure here here you can see there is an arrow mark you just move the cursor over that particular arrow mark such that the specimen will be uh, will get into an a contact with the um, indenter and uh, minor load will be applied you see that is the specimen is in position after doing that you click on this symbol and you can see you have to uh, motor has to be switched on here it is showing the arrow mark for uh, the sake of this is to switch on the motor once this is applied it shows to the uh, load and unload position now it is we have to load load the specimen okay and uh, the loading has to happen for about 10 to 15 seconds the period of, see every detail is here the motor is switched on the hand lever is pulled into the load position the load is applied for a period of 10 to 15 seconds now first i have switched on already now i have to load the specimen and see it has to be applied for 10 to 15 seconds now already more than 10 is done it reaches by 15 you will find an arrow mark such that you unload it okay now you applied the load for about 10 to 15 seconds next you click on this symbol you can see this is an indent indentation that is obtained on the specimen here the specimen is there on the specimen you have made an indentation and that indentation you are observing through an a microscope okay and now what you have to do you have to measure the diameter of this indentation you can clearly observe right the indentation here see you just move the cursor over this one such that it sets to the diameter of that particular thing and it measures the measured diameter is how much 6.4 mm you can clearly observe that the measured diameter of this particular indentation is 6.4 mm and later once that is done you click on the symbol such that you can see the final values will get here the hardness number of the cast iron is uh, 82.5 82.5 is the hardness uh, value of the cast iron okay and this is a measurement based that means they have conducted conducted the experiment um, at a real time and later that values are fed into this particular experiment okay that is about uh, the first trial so here you can clearly observe the diameter of the indenter what is used is 10 mm the load applied is uh, applied is uh, 3000 uh, kg and the diameter of the indentation they have taken the indentation diameters in both the direction we got uh, 6.5 6.3 and average diameter is uh, 6.4 and d by d ratio is 0.64 and the hardness uh, brinell hardness number is 82.5 okay 
like this uh, it it may not have an a uh, physical uh, feel of doing the experiment but 100% it will have an a better understanding just uh, reading the uh, observation book or uh, uh, book before the examination if they go through this particular steps uh, before attending the examination they will do lot better and they will have an a better understanding now i'll move to the second trial in the second trial as usual now i'll move very fast okay you click on that uh, symbol you just move the cursor over that particular point such that it fits the, the specimen will be positioned and a minor load will be applied after that you switch on the motor once you switch on the motor you unload it uh, it will be in the unload position you load it if you load it you have to load it for 10 to 15 seconds okay now you click on and you adjust the microscope such that to measure the diameter sir no that is sir sir any problem sir sir is it audible any problem is there no problem sir okay clearly audible okay sir thank you now see again for the cast iron earlier you got something around 84 or something now you got 82 point like you got all the values like this is uh, how you are to conduct the brinell test now i'll move to the next test like again quiz is there shall we go through the quiz sir or shall i move on to the next experiment yes, sir is this is okay yes sir okay sure sure so what is the minimum thickness of the specimen required 8 times the depth of indentation 20 times the depth of indentation 5 times the depth of indentation 50 times the depth of indentation what is the minimum thickness of the specimen required for conducting a brinell hardness test any answer sir 8 times depth of indentation Okay. I'll check with the same answer. Eight times the depth of indentation, and the answer is correct, sir. Now we shall move to the next question. The indenter used in the test is usually a what type of indenter is used in the brinell hardness test, sir? Hardened steel. Hardened so steel ball. Yes, it is correct. We have gone through the theory where it was mentioned clearly. The property of the material that resists the penetration or indentation by the means of abrasion or scratching is known as. Hardness. 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 Yes, sir. Isn't right answer. What is the diameter of the impression? <laughs> diameter of the impression. Options you can see. What is the right option, sir? Point two. Point two. One. Two D to point seven D. Point seven D. That is small D. Okay. right answer next the time up to which the load has to be maintained in the experiment for mild steel is 10 to 15 10 to 15 seconds 10 to 15 seconds 15 seconds it is the right answer like this it it gives a um, uh, very good experience when after reading the theory if we go through the quiz and if we answer all the questions it really motivates the student as well okay therefore uh, this really helps uh, actually what i feel now After the assignments are available as usual. We can ask the students to go through these assignments or to submit the assignments. And there is a video, no videos here, but references are available for still in-depth knowledge. If it is required, they can go through these particular references. Like that is about the Brinell hardness test. Now I'll take up another uh, uh, experiment and I'll uh, close it. I'll take tensile test on mild steel. I'm taking the experiments which are familiar so that. Uh, no much uh, doubts will be there while going through this particular thing like theory you can see the complete theory you can go through okay in in detail theory is available at a single place about the experiment in stages in ductile fracture is also available and you can see the variation of local elongation with uh, position along gauge length of the tensile specimen The standard here is the relevant Indian standard for tension test is IS one six zero eight one zero five tensile testing at ambient temperature. Okay, this is uh, the theory. I'll consider everyone uh, knows the theory, and I'll move to the uh, self evaluation part. In the self evaluation, we shall check the yield point is the point on the stress strain graph where ultimate stress uh, tensile strength occurs, elastic deformation commences, elastic deformation commences, failure of the material occurs. 
plastic deformation commences plastic deformation commences is the right answer sir what is the distance between the punch marks in the experiment if you have if we have gone through that uh, uh, procedure 100% everyone would have answered this but now uh, few different people may be following the different uh, method i think Three Can times of three. Any other answer, sir? Two point five. Two point five. I think it is correct, sir. Two point five is the right answer. And this hundred percent, everyone would have answered if we have gone through that uh, theory and procedure which is available. Arrange in the order sequence of the experiment. Arrange in order sequence of the experiment. Ultimate load, upper yield point, elastic region. Breaking load, lower lower yield point. The sequence here uh, four options. Which is the option you can sir? Last option number four. Sir, elastic region. Last last option. Last one. Okay. Last. I'll go with the last one. Yes, elastic last region, option. lower yield point, yes, upper yield point, ultimate load, lower breaking load. Region, lower yield point, upper yield point, ultimate load. Last option sir. Yes. I think. Um, Okay, yeah. we'll go with the and we shall check with the last one. It's a wrong answer. That is hmm. elastic region first upper yield point. Next to row yield point will come. Next ultimate load and breaking load. A small confusion. Go back. Or uh, go back. Uh, back. Uh, it is not possible, sir. Because then elastic because region low yield point we have selected first, but actually it should be upper yield point. Upper yield point, next lower yield point, ah, ultimate ah, load and breaking load. Correct, correct. You said it, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Next question. After this, sir, after this, diploma, guys, sir. Okay. Uh, while conducting the experiment, the mode of fracture observed. Uh, mild steel specimen is. Cup and cone shape. Cup and cone. Cup and cone. How uh, which influences the material up to yield point? Oxla. Oxla. <laughs> Oxla, uh, it is correct. Like four out of five we got. It is very nice uh, experience. Next, I'll go to the simulator. Uh, in the simulator, you can see this is the actual um, UTM, uh, the the UTM ultimate uh, universal testing machine. I'll click on the symbol, and uh, we have to measure the initial diameter of the specimen. For that, we are using a vernier caliper. And if I click on the vernier caliper, you see how it moves to the uh, position and it measures the diameter. First, it measures in the along x direction. Next, it measures along the y direction also. And finally, you'll get an average initial diameter d is equal to 12.7 mm. The initial diameter is 12.7 mm. Now, after measuring the initial diameter, we have what we have to measure. We have to measure the gauge length. That we shall uh, length of the specimen we shall measure. Okay. Yes. You click on that scale. So that it reaches and it measures the length of specimen between the grips is 200 mm. Okay. After this step, we have to do the punch marks are made at a distance of 2.5 times of D. D was around the 12.4 uh, or 5, I think. Okay. Two, two times of 2.5 times of D, we have to uh, do the punch marks. You click on the hammer such that the first punch mark is made. Next, again you click on the hammer. The second punch mark is made. Next, click on the hammer. Next, you click on the hammer. Like that, the punch marks are made throughout the length of that particular uh, uh, specimen. After that, in, we have to insert the specimen into the jaws of the UTM, upper jaw and lower jaw. Okay, you click on that, it see how it moves down, and the specimen which is made with the punch marks has to be dragged, in, dragged into the position. Okay, once it is dragged into the position, it fits into that particular uh, jaws, and again, you have to operate it such that it gets fixed into the UTM. Now, here we are using an extensometer to measure uh, the deformations uh, uh, up to the elastic limit or, uh, or proportionality limit. After that, uh, we are not using any extensometer. Okay, now see, like I have to set the extensometer readings to zero value. See how the extensometer is positioned uh, across this particular uh, specimen. I'll make set it to zero and the other extensometer also is set to the zero. Now I'll click on. Now the, after everything is ready, what we have to do? We have to apply the load gradually. In tensile test, we apply the load gradually. Okay, and whereas in impact test, a sudden load is applied. 
okay we are applying the load gradually as the load is applied you can observe here as the load is increasing what is happening uh, we are finding an uh, extensometer reading usually the extensometer reading is uh, a real reading okay uh, where uh, no machine uh, errors will be considered that it is an uh, actual reading what we get through the extensometer but we will measure that extensometer reading up to the elastic limit or proportionality limit itself okay like this now what is happening the load is increasing as the load is increasing, the deformation is happening. The deformation is also noted, load versus deformation. Okay, like see, it has, the load has reached up to 52.5 kilo Newton. Okay, and uh, the deformation, maximum deformation, what we have got is uh, uh, 31, I think. Now I'll switch off the uh, UTM. Once if I switch off the UTM, you can see download data is there. As I said, the data, what you are seeing, everything here, it is the actual data which was obtained when the experiment is conducted for the same specimen really okay therefore this all experiments what you are seeing is in a measurement based experiments now i'll go to the download data if i download the data you will get an excel file you see the tension data is available You can see the data. Average initial diameter D is 12.7 mm. Length of the specimen between the grips is 200 mm. Load in kilonewton is there. Extensometer reading is there. Ivory scale reading is there. Like every data is available here. And this data can be utilized to find out the other uh, uh, properties of the material that has to be obtained. Like you have to find out the X modulus, ultimate tensile strength, or yield strength. Everything can be found out by using this data. Like it is almost like they are doing. Uh, uh, really itself almost because in the lab also many a times they won't touch at least here um, they are operating they are fitting the specimen everything they are doing okay and everyone are actively participating that is most important like this is the data that is available in the excel form and they can do the calculations on their way on their own later part okay now once that is done i'll move to the next step where you can see they have to plot in a load versus uh, uh, deformation okay and uh, this is how the plot they will get this is the stress strain, and this can be uh, transfer uh, converted to a stress strain curve also. okay next you can see the view data the same with this data only that graph has been plotted and see this is the extensometer reading load versus extensometer reading and uh, you can see the slope of this particular if i take the slope of this you got the slope value as 2.21 okay and this is the next step and uh, this slope is utilized to find out the Young's modulus. Next, the after conduction of the experiment, after the conduction of the experiment, uh, like uh, the next step, last uh, next step is you have to measure the final diameter and uh, final uh, gauge length. Okay, for that, what I have to do? You you are seeing the broken specimen. You just click on that, and uh, you click on the vernier such that it measures the final di uh, diameter at the point of fracture. And the final diameter is there is some mistake here don't worry about that because uh, many uh, changes are uh, happening there okay and uh, sometimes we may find some mistakes but here you can understand uh, the procedure is very important which is followed very correctly but some values there will be some mistakes sometimes because the diameter initial diameter was around 12.7 uh, mm here it is showing final diameter as 83 83 mm and don't uh, completely rely on this uh, particular data here, uh, what we have to emphasize for the students is uh, they have to understand the procedure of uh, doing conducting the experiment rather than uh, uh, taking that values blindly. Okay. Now, see, measure the final length between the punch marks. Okay. Now for that, you click on that to measure what is the final length of the specimen. It is 31.95 mm. It is showing. Okay. Like that, you have, you have found out uh, the final diameter as well as the uh, final length. After that, you see, like it is not giving the values directly. It is asking the student to calculate it. See, load at tilt point by virginal cross-sectional area. Formula also it is showing. You can conduct the, uh, the depending upon the data, what they have got in the Excel sheet, they can find out uh, this yield stress, tensile strength, modulus of elasticity, percentage elongation, percentage reduction in area. Everything they can find out. For example, now I'll take some random values. I'm not, I have not calculated that. Okay, load a yield point to the original cross-sectional area. I'll just take some value as 240 uh, Newton per mm square. For tensile strength, I'll take it as 350 Newton per mm square. 
and the uh, modulus elasticity i'll take it as 200 gigapascal and uh, percentage elongation i'll take somewhat uh, 30 and uh, percentage reduction in area i'll take uh, about uh, 40 percent okay, i'll check with this values actually what we have to do we have to calculate lower at yield point divided by original cross section we know the original cross -section diameter original diameter we know once we know the diameter, we can find out the original cross-section area. But I've taken random values now. We shall check the correctness of that. Okay, the actual value is 347. I have entered 240. Therefore, it is showing in a percentage error of, error of 30.94. Like what you have conducted, uh, what you have calculated, and the actual values. Both will be compared, and a percentage error also it is showing here. Okay, like this, uh, this makes the student to actively involve in calculating the things also. Okay, that is about the tensile test. Like again, if you want, I'll take the question and answer, question and answer session in that. Uh, like we have conducted, no quiz is there. We shall see what uh, is there in this particular quiz. All work done on the specimen is stored in the form of strain energy. Choose the correct answer. All work done on the specimen is stored in form of strain energy. Second statement is part of energy is wasted in the form of heat and sound. Which, uh, which is the correct answer? First one is plastic. Stage, second one is elastic stage. Next option, first one is elastic stage, second one is semi-solid stage. Like all these options are there. Anyone, can you give the answer? Elastic stage and semi-solid. Elastic and? Elastic stage. Uh, elastic stage and? And elastic stage. I think elastic stage and plastic stage will be the correct answer. I'll verify it. Yes, sir. It is the right answer because uh, then plastic deformation is happening. The energy is wasted in the form of heat and sound. And in the elastic region, all the energy will be stored and it will be uh, regained when applied load is removed. Okay, like the resilience we know. In elastic region, also resilience is there. Whereas in uh, uh, plastic region, also we find the resilience. Okay, sir. Next question: The tensile stress measured in of Pascal, Newton, Watts. Newton. Tensile stress Newton. measured in Pascal. Pascal, Pascal. is the right answer. Pascal. Pascal. The following statement in relation to Young's modulus are correct with exception of. The following statement in relation to Young's modulus are correct with exception of. It is the measure of resistance to elastic deformation. It equal to constant E identified in Hooke's law. It is the measure of resistance to plastic deformation. It is the measure of modulus of stiffness. Equal to the measure of resistance to plastic deformation. It is the measure of modulus of stiffness. I think uh, modulus of stiffness. Sir, sir, third one, third one. Okay. Third third one. one. Second one, sir. Oh. Equal to constant E identified. Third one is the right answer. Sir. Second one is right. Second, sir. Third one. Third one. Go with the second, we shall see. But uh, I think it is first answer. I think it is first answer. It is the measure of third one. Oh, plastic deformation. It is there given X step. Oh, right, right. Right. One is wrong. Uh, third one is right. Uh, sir. The following statement in relation to X models are correct with the exception of. Okay, right. Yes. Next question. Significant necking was found to occur in tensile test piece. Examine the areas indicated on stress strain curve and indicate where necking of the specimen has occurred. Significant necking was found to occur in a tensile test piece. Examine the areas indicated on stress strain curve and indicate where necking of the specimen has occurred. B to C. B to E. B to E. B to E. Is the correct answer. D to E. Yeah. Which mechanical property of the material is indicated by the total area under the stress strain curve? Total area under the stress strain curve. Which mechanical property? Toughness. Toughness. Toughness is the right answer. Like this. Uh, like we have uh, gone through this self evaluation and uh, post quiz also. Like everyone, no, everyone can go through the theory and procedure, everyone can access and everyone can have the better understanding. It is not a difficult one. Here, our uh, emphasis was uh, just to explore or uh, to 
uh, create awareness among all the participants that these kind of facilities are available. It is not something we are going um, uh, depth into the technicality. We just want to uh, show you the or create awareness among uh, all other college participants such that this can be taken forward to their students and they deliver uh, uh, in a much better way such that the students finally ultimate uh, users are the students who has to be get benefited. This is what was our intention was. Okay, with this regard only we have organized um, this FDP and um, we are going through it. Now um, I'll show all the experiments. Okay, they are all other experiments you have to go through during the afternoon session that is hands-on session uh, that is allocated particularly for the strength of materials lab. Okay, after doing that, uh, the next next session will be on kinematics of machines or uh, kinematics, kinematics of machines and it will be uh, taken forward by uh, Mr. Prabhakar CG. And before going to that, um, I would like to show uh, about the remote triggered labs also. There are remote triggered labs. Okay, as I was discussing about the measurement based, modeling based and uh, measurement based is there modeling based is there and remote triggered based is there and this experiment what you are seeing see it is in a remote triggered experiment where sir everything everything is clear no sir there is no any problem audio is clear sir i want some feedback sir is everything going fine everything fine, is clear sir, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, sir, thank you. Sir, as I said, uh, a remote triggered lab is a uh, real lab which is present in a part, which is present, uh, which is present in case of a uh, participating institutes. It is present in a participating institute, and uh, you are remotely triggering anywhere across the world. You may sit and you can, if you have an internet access, you can uh, internet access. Then you can trigger that experiment which is present in the participating institute. For example, you take this experiment, free vibration of a uh, fixed beam. Okay, this is an equipment, a test equipment, which is present in the NATK Suratkal. Okay, uh, there are two remote triggered uh, labs in case of NATK Suratkal. One is uh, on strength of materials, another one is on uh, mechanical vibrations. You can see this is the equipment which is present in the NATK Suratkal. And there you can see here, uh, status is disconnected. I'll check with the other experiment, we shall see. See, these are the vibration lab uh, experiments which are uh, present. These are the remote triggered experiments. I'll click on the free vibration of a uh, cantilever beam. Okay. And here you see the remote trigger. That was simulation based earlier what we have studied. Now it is remote trigger, you see. This is how, this is what the experiment which is present in the NATK. You can see the online mode. NATK network is there, external network is there. Now I'll go with the external network itself. I'll click on start. If I click on the start, you can see here the status connected. And the connection time will be five minutes only. I will have an access to this particular equipment which is present in the NITK only for five minutes. Control time you can see here. Now it is already uh, four minutes, uh, 41 seconds. Time is there for me to access this one. After that, the next person can access who is in the queue. Now see here, there is a trigger button. If I click on the trigger button, what I am going to do, I am exiting this particular experiment which is present in the NITK. And you can see the live stream here. That means you are seeing the actual uh, uh, image of the or actual experiment which is present in the NIT. Okay, now I'll click on the trigger. See here, triggering the experiment, triggering the experiment and retrieving the data. Please wait. Okay, see, as soon as you trigger the experiment, uh, you got an uh, amplitude versus the time graph. Okay, for that particular excitation, what you are given. Okay, like this, uh, you are actually accessing the equipment which is present in the participating institute remotely. That is what is called as a remote triggered experiments. Therefore, it is closer to the reality. Remote triggered labs are more closer to the reality. Okay, uh, when it comes to all the labs, other two labs will be more scalable, but this one is more real. Okay, now uh, I'll show the simulation based also. Like you can explore many other things, and I think uh, there will be a separate session on the remote triggered labs also from uh, the professor Professor uh, Gangadharan sir. Okay, now I'll show you the simulation based. See, this is the simulation based. One is measurement based, like ISOR, Charpy, all these things we have done. Those are the measurement based. The next one, what I have shown, this one is an, a remote triggered type of experiment. And then now what I am showing is an, a simulation based experiment. Here um, there is an, a mathematical models or, or a formulas which are involved behind this particular uh, experiment. Okay, that means if depending upon the input values what you are giving, uh, it calculates the outputs based on the formulas which are fed into it or the mathematical models which are fed into it. Okay, and accordingly, you are getting the uh, 
uh, values. Like you can see, you can uh, change the link lengths, like R, you can change. And accordingly, the other uh, dimensions also changes. And finally, you will get the velocity diagram in this particular fashion. Okay, like I uh, just wa uh, was uh, thinking about to show you the difference between the measurement based and uh, simulation based and remote triggered. And hope so you have understood uh, the difference between the, the three types of uh, laboratories. What is uh, uh, measurement based or simulation based? Measure, sorry, measurement based, uh, modeling or simulation based, and remote triggered. Like hope you have understood all these three types of laboratories. And if everything is fine, I'll uh, I'll stop the session. And if you have any doubts uh, related to the virtual laboratory, you can ask. There is no doubts. I'll uh, end the session. Thank you, Balaji. You share the link to the participant in WhatsApp group so that they can try it in app. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you all uh, for your uh, patient listening. Time by 12, 12 o'clock, we'll have the second. In next session details are shared in the WhatsApp group and login by 12 o'clock. I request all the participants to join the next session uh, at 12 o'clock and the link will be shared uh, through the WhatsApp group. If anyone has not joined, kindly join the WhatsApp group, which is uh, the link is shared among you people through the mail. So please share the WhatsApp link, sir. Sir, it is already shared. Uh, shared. Uh, it is sent to your mail, sir. Please check your mail. It is there uh, in your mail itself. Okay, yeah, thank you. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, Yogi, sir. Yogi, sir. Sir. Uh, sir, uh, you are going to end the meeting. Sir. Yogi, sir. Yogi, sir. Yogi, sir. Yogi, sir. Yogi, sir. Yogi, sir.